Bible Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today's DIY I am so stinking excited about. Well, it's not really, I would say, a DIY. It's more of a how-to so we can do a DIY. But this is one that I have been working on for a couple of years without success. And the other day I was telling my friend Amber about it and I was telling her how I had been unsuccessful with this and what I wanted to do. She told me she'd do a bit of research because she kind of specializes in stuff like this along that line. And so she was definitely the right person to ask. And I'm so glad that it kind of presented itself and I was able to ask her because she did some research and she found a solution to my problem. So what is it that I'm trying to do? I know I talk in circles and I do that because I like to keep you all guessing. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a silicone mold. But not just a mold for anything, I wanted to make a mold for a mason jar. Now I have googled and researched how to make a mold for a mason jar and nothing comes up for it. Molds for regular candles or toys or whatever come up, but nothing has ever come up for a mason jar and I wanted to make a mold so I could make mason jar candles. Now, I didn't want to just simply be pouring the wax into a mason jar itself. I wanted the candle itself to be in the shape of a mason jar. And so in the past, I wasn't successful with it, but let me tell you, I think I was successful this time and I am so stinking excited to share this with you because this DIY, this how-to to do this DIY is so easy, so budget friendly, and I think that it opens up endless possibilities for DIYs and gift ideas because who wouldn't love to receive a mason jar candle that isn't in a jar, that's just the candle itself. One that you can DIY on a budget, you make a mold for it and you can reuse it. It doesn't get any better than that. Okay, I need to quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let me show you just how easy this is to do. You're gonna love this. I love this. This is fun. It's fun to kind of switch up the crafts and do a little bit of different things here and there. It keeps it going. It keeps the creative juices going. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet. Let's get to it. Getting started. Guess what? You're gonna need a bowl of water. And along with that water, you're gonna need some of Dawn's dish soap. Now don't go getting any other dish soap. You need Dawn because Dawn fights oil and grease and that's what we need for this DIY. You can get a bottle of this at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. We're gonna put some of the Dawn in the water. There's no real measuring involved. You see that I'm just squirting it in there. You need to add some in there. We're also gonna need some clear silicone. This is by GE. This is the one that is the cheapest. You can find this at Walmart, again, the cheapest. If you want to go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get it there. You're going to pay a bit more money. At Walmart, this one was $4. You need the gun to dispense it, or you can get one that you can dispense with your hand for $3.77. You're going to need a couple tubes of this. Look at what we're doing. We're taking the silicone. That's right. We're squirting it in the Dawn dish soap water. You're probably wondering, what is she doing? If you've seen a silicone mold DIY, you know what I'm doing. If not, Silicone is very sticky, very, very sticky. If you were to get this on your hand, it is gooey, it, sticky, it just makes a mess. So by putting it in the water with the Dawn, we're deactivating that grease and that stickiness. And so I'm gonna put, I think I'm starting off with the smaller jar, a mason jar. So I'm gonna put about a quarter to a half of the tube of the silicone in the water. This here is why I have gloves on, because something about touching silicone without gloves just doesn't seem right to me, and I don't want to ruin my nails. You're going to knead your silicone when it's in the water and kind of get it working together. You want it to 
meshed together instead of being that long bead of silicone that we squirted in the water you want it to kind of be pliable and as you're working it you're gonna see that it kind of falls apart a bit it might be a bit sticky still so you want to keep kneading it in the water until it kind of sticks together and it isn't so sticky and that's why you're using the Dawn because the Dawn kind of counteracts that stickiness that's in the silicone once you've worked it and you see that it is one big lump of silicone, we're done. The containers I'm using today are these Surefresh containers. It comes in a two pack from the Dollar Tree. You're gonna want this size here for a larger mason jar. And you wanna go with clear. We're gonna go ahead and stick the silicone in the container and we're gonna press it down, really getting those air bubbles out. And that there is why you want a clear container because you can see through it and see if there's any air bubbles. Air bubbles equals a not so good silicone mold. So we don't want those. We wanna get rid of as many as we can. I'm gonna take my larger mason jar and I'm place it in the center of my container. You want an even spacing around your mason jar when you do this and you're gonna lightly press down on your mason jar. As you're pressing down on your mason jar, you're gonna see that the silicone is rising up around your mason jar, which is what you want, and you wanna keep putting it, that pressure until you've got the height of the silicone that you want. Now you can see here, I didn't quite put enough silicone in this mold. So I'm gonna go ahead and using a wet hand, you wanna dip your hand in that soapy water. You can mold and I guess press down your silicone. And now that's what you're gonna wanna do if you need to add more silicone to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a bit more to my bowl so I can make my mold a bit higher up. And I'm gonna do the same thing using the same water. I'm gonna go ahead and knead that. Once I've got it all kneaded, it's not so sticky. I'm gonna go ahead and place it around the top of my mason jar because I need it to be just a bit higher. Because this is a mold that I wanna keep and I wanna reuse, I'm gonna try and make it as neat as I can on the top and there again, I am going to use a wet hand and just kind of smooth out the top of this. Because this container kind of has those ring lines on the top of it for the cover, you want to make sure and get as much of the silicone out of those lines as you can because it's going to kind of inhibit taking your mold out. And so just by using your wet hand again and taking off the excess silicone, you can do that. And you're going to have a really nice, neat silicone mason jar mold and here it is done it is looking good i'm gonna set this aside and i'm gonna let this dry for about an hour because it is on the thicker side while the mold is drying i figured i'd make one for this little mason jar from the dollar tree and i'm also going to be using these cups that you can get at the dollar tree that come in a three pack as well i'm gonna do the same thing that i did with the last one only we're using less silicone I bought a total of three tubes of this silicone and I used two total and I want to say for the larger mason jar I ended up using one and a half tubes and because this is a smaller one I only needed half of the tube and I still have a full tube left that I haven't opened and so yeah it really is super budget friendly and what's great is once you make these molds like I said you can keep reusing them. And so that's the great part of this. I do also wanna say that you cannot use any other silicone. You need to use the silicone that I'm using because it's the only one that works correctly. You can't use a dab or a caulking. It doesn't work. You have to use a silicone. And in my opinion, the weatherproof GE clear silicone that you can get at Walmart or any of your hardware stores is the best way to go. And there we go, look at that, just that easy. We've got a nice mold for this mason jar. Now I probably could have used a smaller container and not used as much silicone, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna let both of these dry for about an hour. The silicone's gonna harden and we will be good to go so I can show you how these molds work. It's been about an hour and the silicone has hardened, solidified, solidified, and it's dry, it's good to go. 
In order to remove the mold from the container, I am going to take a butter knife and just run it along that top edge of the container and the silicone itself just to kind of break the seal because some of that silicone may have gone over the edge and then you can see I can very easily just pull out the mold itself. Now you don't want to throw this away because we want to replace the silicone mold back inside of it later so we're just going to set that aside for now. And so here we have our mold. Fun, huh? I'm going to go ahead and remove the smaller one as well doing the same thing. And like I said, I know I used a bit of a bigger mold for this one, but it is what it is. I had three tubes. You're probably saying, Kelly, that's really cool, but how do we get the jar out of the mold? Well, this is how. We're gonna take a really sharp X-Acto knife or razor, and we're gonna cut a very clean, straight slit down one side of the silicone. When you do that, you should be able to separate it. Just keep your X-Acto knife on hand if you don't go deep enough. Once you completely separate it, you will see that the mold itself will open up and it will release the jar pretty easily and it'll just kind of pop right out. You might need to wiggle it a little bit, but it'll pop right out and there is our jar and there is our mold with a nice clean cut in it. And I'm gonna show you how this works in just a bit. Look at that, isn't that cool? I can't wait to make this. Can't wait to make a candle out of this. You're gonna love this. And again, you do want to keep the container that you made your mold in because it was made for this mold and it's a really good way to store your mold. I'm going to go ahead and remove the larger mason jar out of this mold. And now I will tell you the one thing I wish I would have done differently before I cut the slit in the mold was look inside the mold to see where I'm cutting the slit. Because as I cut it, I cut it right through the writing that says ball on the front of it, which I was really frustrated about after I did it. And so live and learn through my experiences before you cut the slit in your silicone to remove your glass jar, look on the inside where you're cutting so you don't disrupt the words. And so that's kind of a bummer, but it's okay. We're still gonna work with it. Our mold came out awesome minus the slit there. It fits perfectly back in its container. Now we are ready to make some candles and show you how this works. The wax that I'm using today is the wax from these jar candles that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I had these in my stash. The middle one has already been melted down and used for another candle. And for scent, I'm gonna use these wax melts. These are also from the Dollar Tree. I love the color of these wax melts. I think it's such a fun spring green. And so that's what I'm gonna use along with some crayons. Crayons are a great way to color your wax. If you don't have a wax dye, you can use crayons and this crayon matches these wax melts perfect. So that's what we're gonna use. You do wanna take the paper off before you go ahead and melt it down. And so I'm gonna split the one crayon between two candles because the crayons are a very pigmented crayon and so you don't need a lot to color your wax. And I'm gonna do one in orange just to do it and I'm gonna add one of my wax melts for scent. And I did add one of the green wax melts to the orange for scent as well, because I think that the orange is just gonna kinda take it over. I stuck these in the oven at 300 degrees for about 15 minutes. They are good and melted down. I'm gonna take a skewer and just kinda mix up that wax in the crayon, because sometimes when it melts, it kinda goes down to the bottom, so you do need to stir it just a bit. Once it's well and Playing together those wax melts, the crayon and whatnot, I did remove the wick because we're gonna reuse the wick from these. Why wouldn't we? Before we pour our wax, we're gonna keep our silicone back in its container that it was made in, and that's going to seal and close up that slit that we cut to remove the jar. Isn't that awesome? Now we can go ahead and just pour our wax into the mold. Now I will tell you, don't pour the wax into the mold as soon as you pull it out of the oven. I would give it about 15 minutes to cool so you can touch the glass. The glass is cool to touch, but the wax hasn't solidified. And I feel like that's when you're gonna have a better outcome with your candle. I didn't have enough wax to go to the top with the wax that I had here at home, but so be it. I'm just showing you that these work. I'm gonna go ahead and replace 
the wick and to keep the wick in place if you just kind of wrap the wick itself around a skewer or a pen or a pencil that lays over the top it'll keep it in place and your wax will solidify with it in place now let's make the smaller one and with the smaller one i used the orange and so this one i had plenty of wax to fill to the top so you will see the difference in outcome between the orange candle and i guess the lime green Ooh, I just got a frog in my throat. Actually, I got a dry spot in my throat. Sorry about that as my voice is cracking. I'm gonna go ahead and put the wick in there. I'm gonna set these aside and let them dry. It's been a couple of hours and you can see the wax has solidified. And let's see how these turned out. Just by turning this upside down, it's gonna release the mold. And you can see that my wax did not seep out anywhere. The mold worked perfectly. And so I can't wait to just kind of open this up and see how this looks. So by gently just kind of pulling it apart and it might've stuck together again because of the heat from the wax. So you might need your X-Acto knife, you might not, but if you're gonna use it, just don't go deep enough that you score your candle. I would just kind of work with it a little bit and it'll come back apart. Once it's apart, you can see that our candle has been made and it's gonna pop right out and look at how cool that looks. I love this. Look at how awesome. I just made a mason jar mold out of silicone so I can make mason jar candles. I'm so stinking excited. Now I will tell you, if there are any imperfections in the wax, you can take one of Dollar Tree's metal paint scrapers and lightly go over the edge or the surface of the wax and it will kind of cut off those imperfections you don't want to put any pressure and dig into it you just kind of want to scrape a little bit now doing the larger one I'm gonna go ahead and come on out come on is it gonna come out or is it stuck nope it's coming it's gonna work its way out and looking at this mold you can see in this one spot that some of the wax did come out but I'm not real worried about it. It wasn't a lot. Let's break this open. I can see that when the wax solidified, it really did go a bit lower than I thought. So there isn't gonna be the neck on this one, but that's okay. The gist of it is that we now have a candle that is made in the shape of a mason jar and I couldn't be more excited about it. I think this one was actually still warm and so I'm gently holding it because as I was holding it, it was kind of molding to my fingers. I was a little impatient. I think I thought since the smaller one was already hardened, I wasn't thinking that this larger one was gonna take a bit more time. So just be patient, not like I was, and it'll come out fine. And I am excited that I can now do these. I think that these are great gift ideas. And again, you can just shave off any imperfections if you have any. So yeah, Kayla wants to know if she's a millennial and she's gonna do this by finding out through a BuzzFeed quiz. Those are very legit. This is a good way to find out. If you need a good laugh, you need to head on over to her channel. You can find the link to this video in the description box below. Now I know making molds out of silicone is nothing new. This was not my idea, but like I've said, I have Googled and researched and so did Amber trying to figure out how to make a mold out of a mason jar and neither one of us could find it, but we did find how to make a mold out of, I want to say toys. And the key to it was keeping the containers that you made the molds in. And that makes so much sense because in the past, I didn't use a container to make my mason jar mold. I just simply wrapped the silicone around the mason jar itself and it was kind of a funky shape. And then when I went ahead and cut the silicone after it dried to pull the mason jar out, I couldn't figure out how to seal it tight enough to stop the wax from falling out. I had used tape, but tape doesn't stick to silicone. And so that was where the problem happened. And I never once thought to actually make it in a container that it would actually slip back into. So when you put the mold back in there, it would seal that slit. And even if you do get a bit of a line where the slit is in the mold itself, you can very gently take a paint scraper from the Dollar Tree and kind of run over it and smooth it out and it'll scrape off that excess wax and you have got a perfect mold. I think the smaller one did come out a bit better 
But in all honesty, I think this one would have turned out just as great had I had enough wax to go up the neck and then it would have looked just as great. But I didn't fill the mold up all the way because I didn't have enough wax and I was just using the wax that I had on hand just to show you how the molds work themselves. And so the mold is made all the way up the neck of the mason jar and so it will work if you just fill it up and you'll end up with the same outcome as the small one that I did here. I hope you all enjoyed today's how-to DIY silicone mold mason jar deal. Oh my goodness. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive. And